According to the NIH, one in three adults have metabolic syndrome. John Hopkins, one of the most prestigious medical institutions, defines metabolic syndrome by the following five criteria. The first is abdominal obesity, defined as having a waist circumference of above 35 for women and above 40 inches for men. The second is a blood pressure of 130 or higher. The third is impaired fasting glucose of greater than 100 milligrams per deciliter. The fourth is high triglycerides of greater than 100 50 milligrams per deciliter. The fifth criteria is low HDL cholesterol of 40 or less for men and 50 or less for women. The American Heart Association recommends a diagnosis when an individual presents with three of the aforementioned criteria. Unfortunately, most people living today meet at least three of those five criteria for metabolic syndrome. Even just meeting one of the criterion puts you at significant risk for cardiovascular insult. All this is to say that if you meet any of the criteria, you need to be doing something about it. Not only for yourself, but for your loved ones as well. Metabolic disease starts well beyond the presentation of the obvious physical symptoms. That's why it's important to get ahead of this stuff now if you want to live a long, healthy life and show up for your loved ones and family. Your early middle age years are a particularly vulnerable time when metabolic syndrome starts to take hold. Your body makes the hormone insulin in order to transport glucose into every cell of your body. The problem is when your body no longer recognizes insulin, it's unable to uptake that glucose into the muscle and liver, thus leading to high blood sugar levels in your bloodstream. The consequence of high blood sugar levels over time is arterial hardening and vascular damage. Think heart disease, and metabolic syndrome drastically increases your risk for heart disease. They can almost be thought of as, as one and the same. The first step to finding out whether or not you have metabolic syndrome will involve getting some simple tests. You can even do some of these at home. The first thing you're going to do is measure your weight size. That's going to rule out the first criterion. Secondly, you're going to want to get an average blood pressure reading. The reason that I say an average reading is because your instantaneous blood pressure is often not indicative of your trend over time. Your blood pressure can be affected by nervousness, tiredness, stress, etc. I recommend that my clients take their blood pressure for about two weeks first thing in the morning after they wake up before they have their coffee. Once you record that reading for a couple weeks, then you can simply take an average. For the second criterion to measure your blood glucose, you're going to need a blood test. It's a super simple test and your primary care physician can order it for you. You want to make sure when you get your blood sugar tested that you're getting the fasting glucose panel. Because ultimately if you ate something, of course your blood sugar is going to be a lot higher. So you want to measure it first thing in the morning after a night of fasting. The last two criteria, finding out your triglycerides and HDL cholesterol, can also be found with a simple metabolic panel that you can ask your primary care for. Once you get baseline metrics for those five criteria that I just mentioned, you can start to do something about it. In order to cure metabolic syndrome, we're going to need to do something about the first criterion, and that's abdominal obesity. The best way to reduce your waistline is both through diet and exercise. I've made several videos about how to decrease body fat, and I'll put them on the screen here and also in the link in the description below. But to be brief, in order to lose body fat around your waistline, you're going to need to be in a sustained calorie deficit. A calorie deficit occurs when you're burning burning more energy than you're taking in. So you'll need to implement a combination of calorie restricted feeding in addition to an exercise program. The net result will be decreasing body fat and thus reversing abdominal obesity. I know diet and exercise may seem like two of the most obvious explanations. However, it's often not about what you need to do, but how you're going to get it done that makes it so challenging. And for that reason, I highly recommend you hire a professional to help you. I've helped hundreds of my clients reverse abdominal obesity and get their health back on track. This way they can start feeling confident again in their body and most importantly get their metabolic health back on track. You can send me an email if you'd like to find out more about my personalized coaching. I offer diet and exercise plans that are specific to your needs and lifestyle in order to reverse metabolic syndrome. The second criterion for metabolic syndrome is having a blood pressure of above 130 over 80. And the best way to reduce high blood pressure is not through reducing salt. The best way to lower blood blood pressure is by implementing a cardiovascular strategy. When you perform cardiovascular exercise, it allows your blood vessels to dilate, thus allowing the blood to flow with less pressure and placing less stress on your vascular system. That's why I recommend zone 2 training for all of my clients. You can learn more about this specific type of training on the video that I put on the screen above. But basically, it's a form of cardiovascular exercise that is relatively low intensity. Zone 2 training has immense cardio 
protective benefits, and you can start it no matter what your fitness level is. Implementing a several time a week cardiovascular training program will drastically decrease your blood pressure in just a couple weeks. The third criterion for metabolic syndrome is having a fasting glucose of greater than 100 milligrams per deciliter. The best way to reduce your fasting glucose levels is to reduce your sucrose and fructose consumption. As a first step, you should aim to remove the added sugars from your diet. Now I know this can be incredibly challenging and it's not going to happen overnight, but if you reduce it by at least 50% or move in the right direction, you're going to make a drastic impact. Unfortunately, added sugars in almost everything that you get packaged in the supermarket. And that's why I recommend that my clients shop the outside aisles of the grocery store. The whole foods that you find in the outside aisles of the grocery store often have no added sugar. Just implementing this one strategy of eating mostly whole foods and meats will drastically reduce your fasting glucose levels. When you hit that middle age phase of life, it's incredibly important to start focusing on your metabolic health. Your risk for a cardiovascular event significantly increases with age, and the best way to reduce cardiovascular events is to cure metabolic syndrome. Even if you don't meet any of the criteria yet, you really need to have a strategy for focusing on preventing metabolic syndrome. Because if you're not doing anything to actively prevent it, chances are you're going to develop it at some time. If you have any questions or need any help, feel free to reach out to me. This world is becoming increasingly digitized and automated, and I want to make sure healthcare stays personalized. Send me an email or leave me a comment below and I promise I will get back to you. Cheers and we'll see you next time.